Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We are so glad again to, to be before you this day. I am personally so glad to be before you this day. It has been a while since I've had a chance to be here at Morningstar. I mean, really since pastoral anniversary and, and God has been faithful and God has been good, awfully good, as I'm sure he has to been, as he has been to each and every one of us. And certainly wish that things were different. We obviously wish we had the fellowship right now that we, we normally have, but God is faithful and he has given us this opportunity, this way to connect with one another. And I thank God for Pastor Henderson and sharing forth the, his messages, both Bible study and through the sermons over the last few weeks. And I'm grateful this morning for this opportunity to share forth this word, this message of encouragement that God has given me for you, for us, during these difficult times. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, once again for your many blessings. We thank you for allowing us, Lord, to be able to come together virtually this morning, Lord, to be able to share forth this message of encouragement. And we pray now, Lord, that you would uplift your word, Lord. We know that your word, when, when it is brought forth, Lord, will not return to you void. And we pray, Lord, that wherever people may be, wherever situations that people may be facing right now, Lord, that you would meet them in their, their needs, Lord. Where we know that there is sickness, where we know that there is uncertainty in, in the minds of people, Lord, we know that you are greater than sickness, greater than uncertainty. And so right now, Lord, we pray that you would reign strong over these things, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, during this difficult time. And yet remind us, Lord, that you are God and God alone that we don't need to be concerned with the worries of this world in the respect that we feel like we feel hopeless, but instead we should feel encouraged knowing that you're doing something in this season, Lord, and we just simply need to prepare ourselves for it. Now, Lord, please bless this word that is going forward. Please bless this message that will be brought forth, Lord. Let it be as you desire it to be. Let your Holy Spirit speak through me this moment, and let it be to your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So this morning, we want to share a short message, or fairly short message, but an important one coming from a very familiar passage of scripture in Ecclesiastes. In fact, it's Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and I want to share forth these first 11 verses for our hearing this morning. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, the first verse reads, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather, away, gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war in a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of man to be exercised in it. And he hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from beginning to the end. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are certainly dealing with a very difficult time in this world, and certainly there's some things that we have all heard or experienced in these times that are obviously are very troubling for us. Things like isolation, quarantine, masks and gloves, washing hands and disinfecting everything, furloughs and food shortages, fearing to leave your home asymptomatic virus carriers, disillusionment and distrust. 
all of us are living out these events, these experiences and emotions together, even though we are socially distancing ourselves. Yet, in the midst of this moment in human history, have you stopped to consider that there have been other way of life altering events in, the, in human history? That there have been other pandemics that have also brought this world seemingly to its breaking point. Obviously not in any of our generations, but still, this world has carried on despite these challenges in its history. Matthew, the 24th chapter, speaks of wars and rumors of wars, famines and pestilences and earthquakes all over the place. Yet in the same pericope of scripture here in Matthew 24, Jesus warns his disciples in the sixth verse to see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And that is truly an encouraging thing to know. Like the disciples, we too must heed this warning that if we are to get through the current times with not only our physical health intact, but also our emotional health and our spiritual well-being, we have to realize that, that the end is not here yet. We don't know the day nor the hour. This, my brothers and sisters, requires the constant exercising, strengthening, and working of our faith in God to understand. We can't simply understand it by just living. You've got to work your faith. You've got to exercise your faith in order to, to really know that God is still at work and the end is not until, is not here yet. It is not until he desires it to be. In order to recognize this moment, we must be clear on this one fact. This is yet another moment in the history of mankind, another time, another season. It is therefore essential for us to understand that the time, seasons, and moments like this are rooted in uncertainty. Yet, we can learn from this familiar path of scripture here in our text from Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, that nothing has happened that God has not already foretold through his word. Knowing this should reassure us that he is also ready to fulfill his promises of protection and provision unto his people. I've had to encourage myself daily, reminding, him, reminding myself of his protection and of his provision. The only thing that is certain is that we still serve a God that knows all of our sorrows and struggles and is able to bear our burdens with us, that our God is able to keep us from falling into the stumbling block of despair that is so easily befalling both believer and non-believer this day. All the more important, we must seek his presence in our lives, my brothers and sisters. I want to encourage you to remember this morning to trust God in times of uncertainty. That's my, my sermon topic this morning. Trust God in, in times of uncertainty. Well, we know that's not always easy, especially when we said times of uncertainty. Of course, it's easy to trust somebody and trust in something when things are clear to us. But my first point this morning is life. Life is full of uncertainty. Looking here at these first eight verses, we can see that life is full of uncertainty, but before we can talk about how life is full of uncertainty, we need to ensure that we understand what the word uncertainty even means. Uncertainty is defined here as not able to be accurately known or predicted. In fact, the one thing we do know about life is that we cannot accurately know how or when things will happen for us or to us. But God knows, and in, in his infinite wisdom, he has shared through King Solomon these wise words about living despite a life full of uncertainty. Right here in the first verse, it says, To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. A season and a time to every purpose? That means that everything that happens in our lifetimes, regardless of what we perceive the outcome of what occurs, has a purpose. This moment has a purpose. When you were born, there was a purpose. As you went through your, your education, there was a purpose. When you had your fam you started your family, there was a purpose. Godly wisdom in Romans 8.28 tells us that, and we know that all things work together for good 
to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Understanding how everything, good or bad, works for good has challenged each believer when contemplating the variability of the seasons of our lives. It is, again, these following experiences found here in verses 2 through 8, where it talks about things such as a time to kill and a time to cast away and a time to get and a time to lose, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. All these things are things that we are seeing in these times, but they can best be summed up as uncertainty, you know, and the uncertainty of life that in which while these things will occur to each of us, we are not always privy to God's timing of these events. We don't know what the time is. We simply know that God has ordained a time for these things to happen. Thusly, not knowing when, you know, these, about the uncertainty of these things we face, like the season we currently are experiencing, we have to trust God in a time in a life full of uncertainty. Life and death and happiness and sorrow and destruction and rebuilding, loss and gain, casting and keeping, speaking and staying silent, love or hate, war or peace. The timing of which for all of these is not certain. And usually if we do not heed to the still soft voice of the Holy Spirit, we will overlook the lesson in trusting God regardless of the outcome. Certainly, we look forward to the favorable things that we read here, like love and life and happiness and gain. But do we recognize that God's purpose for all things cannot be fulfilled if we just had all those good things that we like or the things that we, that all the things that happen that we perceive as favorable happen only? What purpose, then, does the loss of these favorable things and experiencing unfavorable, uncomfortable, and certainly times of uncertainty serve? Well, there are two things that can help you and I, my brothers and sisters, during these times. And the first of them is my second point. Stop stressing. Stop stressing. Now, I know this is not an easy thing to share with somebody, to tell somebody, especially in these difficult times, to stop stressing. But tr trust me, if, if you look closely here at these verses of Scripture, you'll see why stressing is not going to make anything move faster we're not going to be, you know, stay at home will not be, will not go away any faster. The government will not move any faster. COVID will not go away any faster if we continue to stress. But that's, again, why we have to understand what is stress. So stop stressing. Here in the ninth and 10th verses, we will find out why we must stop stressing. Do you think that God places stress on, upon his people or do we, do we, and lacking trust or faith in God's plan, knowingly chose to experience the anxiety, worry, and trouble generally associated with the state of stress? That's a question that we all have to answer, my brothers and sisters, this morning. Do we think that God places stress upon his people, or do we, lacking trust or faith in God's plan, knowingly choose to experience the anxiety, worry, or trouble generally associated with the state of stress. Something I've had to wrestle with, and I'm sure we all wrestled with, you know, over the last month plus. Stress is defined as the mental or emotional strain resulting from our reaction, there it is, the most important thing, to adverse or demanding circumstances. So it's our reaction to these things. It is the strain that we feel we experience, from our, be it our reaction to these things, that is really what stress is. So then, why do we choose to react as if we don't believe that God is able to help us? Good question. This point of stop stressing does not mean that believers should not take matters seriously. Not, not in the least bit. That is definitely not what, what, what God is trying to tell us about this time, about any of the, 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 the difficult times in our life. But it means that believers should allow the less than favorable experiences to strengthen our trust and faith in God, such as when we're exercising. You know, as we're exercising, we're, we're putting on physical strain on our muscles in order to make them stronger. That's what God is doing here 
in this time, this season for us. He's helping to make us stronger, stronger in faith, stronger in character, stronger in, in being able to deal with difficult situations and, and knowing how to persevere through them. When you think about it, think about, just think about it for a moment. Think about, think over your life for a moment. Problems are not new. Resources have not, not really ever been in abundance. Staying healthy has always been a concern. We haven't always had people around us when we felt like we needed them. And yet God, time and time again, has brought us through. Because so many times we choose to perceive and react adversely to less than favorable circumstances, rather than leaning on the lessons that we have learned. Verses 9 through 10 illustrate for us that God will allow us to labor in, grapple with, and experience these things. It says here, verse 9, What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of man to be exercised therein. Grappling, struggling with the stressors in our life instead of realizing that God is in control. My brothers and sisters, we've got to work diligently, and I say diligently, at changing the way we perceive and react to stress. Stop stressing. Instead, lay your burdens before the one that can truly carry them. If you don't believe me, a few verses of Scripture will help to, to help our understanding this morning. Matthew 6, the 25th verse through the 34th verse is very familiar as well. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat and what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you being anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Again, talking about anxieties, casting all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. That's 1 Peter 5 and 7. And Philippians 4 6 reminds us and actually gives us a hint as to how we can stop stressing. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So yes, we can deal with the stress. If we start to pray and we start to, to let God know of what we desire, what we need in our lives, but most importantly, that we thank him for blessing us even in this moment, giving us a roof over our head, giving us food to eat, giving us a place to stay in a time like this when there are so many who don't know where their next meal, where the place they're going to stay are going to come from. Giving us safety, giving us health provisions, and people that care about our health. These are the things that we need to be thankful for. If, and if we're thankful and we pray to God and we, we recognize how blessed we truly are, even in difficult times, these are the things that will allow that stress level to come down in your life. We must choose to lay aside the burdens and change how we respond to the stressors. God has provided the means to prayer and supplication, the learning of his promises through the study of his word, and forming a relationship with him. Once we make a conscious effort, my brothers and sisters, to respond in a state of serenity instead of struggle, prayerfully you may experience the grace and mercy afforded unto us when we trust God. But I already shared with you there were two things that will help us during this time, you know, of times of uncertainty to get through it. And obviously it's not just to only stop stressing, but my last thing, but my last point is to stop this is truly to start, excuse me, to start trusting God. Here in the 11th verse, it makes it really clear for us to start trusting God. We are quickly learning through the uncertainty of these current events that we cannot trust or, nor depend upon mankind to have all the answers or to provide the means by which that we may all remain healthy and our needs be met. No matter, no matter of what size you know, you know, surplus that we may get, no stimulus check, no matter what we may receive from others you know, in kindness, we still don't have all the answers, nor will we, would our needs be met if it was not for the God that provided it all. 
the A portion of verse 11 reveals to us that God, it is God who makes everything right in his time. Thank you, Jesus, for making everything right in your time. Thank you, Heavenly Father. As children, many of us learn the song that he, we know, God, has the whole world in his hands. Then as we got older and life got tougher and the responsibilities began to grow in our lives, so many of us have seemingly forgotten that God is omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient, meaning he is all-powerful, all-present, all-knowing. Certainly, if we serve a God that is all-powerful, all, always present, and always knowing, he is still is on the throne, my brothers and sisters, still trying to protect us, still trying to give us hope, still with us, my brothers and sisters. We just have to learn to trust him. It seems appropriate, then, that just as Solomon assures us that God will work things out in his time, that God has also intentionally set the concerns of living in this world in our hearts so that none of us can think of ourselves as more knowledgeable or more capable than God himself. It's right here in in the B part of that verse. It says, also he has set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God is making from beginning to end. We have to see this because that's why we, we, we can't play, we can't think that anyone can play God, that anyone that has more knowledge than God because God has intentionally set the, the problems of this world in our hearts so that we can learn to depend upon him. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, that's why we must trust him. We do not have all the answers, nor can we fix, thing, fix all things despite the advances in human capabilities. I encourage you today, if you have not allowed, if you have allowed the stress of life to overcome your faith, to start trusting God, my brothers and sisters. We have to start trusting him. But you might be thinking, there may be that Debbie Downer, or that Daryl Doubter out there that's saying, why should I trust God? Why should I trust God? Well, Here's some verses of scripture to encourage you and to remind you of why trusting God is so much better than trusting in man. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. That first verse coming from Isaiah 56, 3, talking about being afraid and putting trust in God. This last verse about keeping him, keeping him in perfect peace, whose mind has stayed on you because he trusts in you, coming from Isaiah 26, the third verse. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Psalm 62, 8. God is a refuge for us. That's why we trust in him. He is our protector. It also tells us in Jeremiah 17, 7, that blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Blessings come from trusting in the Lord. Well, let's find out what some of these blessings are. Psalm 37, verse 5 tells us to commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will what? Act. That is someone if, that if you, you trust in and you know that the act is an assurance there that he is with you. And then a familiar verse, two verses of scripture from Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. He will make things clear. He will work things out. But you have to trust him and lean not unto your own understanding, my brothers and sisters. Then a very important um, seven verses of scripture that I think really sum up what we are experiencing in these days and times, I hope will really encourage you that I'm about to share from Psalm 91, verses 1 through 7. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He will cover thee with his feathers, and with his wings shall thou trust. His trust shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, 
but it shall not come nigh thee. My Lord, I tell you, I serve a God. I know I serve a God. I know I believe in a God. I know I trust in a God that is true to his word. He has done it time and time again. If it, has, if it hasn't been from healing my body to you know, providing means for me and making a way out of no way to helping other people in my life and helping me through difficult times and, and giving me understanding. That's how I know that this word is true. And I know that if you look in your heart and you look back over your life, you will see it as well. It truly encourages me, encourages me that I serve a God that sits high and yet looks low and concerned for not just me, but for you as well. It encourages me that his word promises that he has made everything beautiful in his time. It encourages me that God and God alone is both Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. It encourages me that he sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross to reconnect you and me with him. It encourages me that on that third day morning, Jesus got up with all power to fix it all and a name above all names. Yes, a name greater than fear, a name greater than doubt. Yes, a name greater than COVID, a name given unto mankind by which we must be saved. That name is Jesus. Jesus is greater than COVID. Jesus is greater than, than, than virus sickness. Jesus is greater than than unemployment. Jesus is greater. When, when people say COVID, call on the name of Jesus. He is willing to work it out. He is with us, and he is certainly our hope and our trust, but we have to recognize him, and most importantly, we have to give him his due honor and give our Heavenly Father his due honor because we know that they are certainly worthy of our trust. My brothers and sisters, this morning I again encourage you to remember to trust God in times of uncertainty. May God bless your hearts and keep you while we are absent from one or another. Amen. God bless you.